QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Adjusting Entry and Reversing Entry Journal Reports. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. Going through the setup process we do every time, maximize the home page to the gray area in the view drop down. We got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial, P&L, profit and loss. I'm gonna bring the range from January through March, remembering that the end of February was our cutoff, but we had some reversing entries in March. So I'm going to take this from 010123 to 033123. And then let's change it from the totals to the months, month by month comparison. And then I'm going to go to the customize and fonts and numbers, changing the font, bringing it on up to 14. Okay yes and okay let's do the same for the balance sheet and the reports drop down company and financial the big balance sheet standard customize it so we can change in the range in 010123 to, to 033123 let's do first three months drop down let's change it to the months month by month breakouts what i'd like to see the side by side the fonts the numbers changing it to equal the 14 which we had on the p to the l and there we have it. So that's the setup process that we do every time. We now have implemented all the adjusting entries that we're gonna do at this point in time. So now you can kind of compare your numbers looking at the balance sheet and the income statement. And then we'll also print out a trial balance and then we'll export these reports. Now, obviously, if you're on the bookkeeping side of things, if you were to be doing bookkeeping or in the accounting department, then you would uh, you would wait till after you do the bank reconciliations and after you do adjusting entries to provide the financial statements then to clients, for example. However, note that if you're doing accounting or bookkeeping for a smaller company, then you might not have a kind of as much of a formal adjusting entries at the end of the month, but rather might be waiting till like the end of the year possibly to do the adjusting entries necessary, at least for taxes to get the tax preparation correct and the reporting correct at that time. So it kind of depends on how often, you, you know, how you're gonna set up your routine for doing the adjusting process and who's gonna be involved within it. So in any case, we can check our numbers here. This is what we have thus far. These are the, the February numbers and then the March numbers after we have reversed. And then we're gonna go to the profit and loss. Same thing here. We've got the cutoff date is February. And then we, we had some reversing entries in March, which basically reversed out. Most of them have fully reversed out by the end of March. This one hasn't because we still haven't entered the transaction for interest in the following month. But that is our profit and loss. Now let's open our uh, trial balance reports drop down accounting and taxes, the trustee trial balance, opening it up and take that from 010123 to let's go to 022823. That's the cutoff date. And then customize this report. We'll go to the fonts and numbers changing the font up to let's do this one at well, let's keep it at 14 to be the same so i'm going to export these to excel eventually so there's there we have these numbers so you can check as of the cutoff date on the trial balance which is probably the easiest way to check the numbers if anything is off here then what we're going to do next is look at what we did different in this section or this course which was the adjusting entries if you have the beginning balances correct and then these adjusting entries were entered, then the ending balance has to be basically correct. If your beginning balances are wrong, then you could go back and kind of check out from the prior section. So in other words, 
you might want to, if you have an issue, uh, run, you know, run the report possibly as of the end of uh, 227, the day before the end of the year, because I don't believe we had any actual transactions on the 28th. We may have, which you would have to account for. And then, and then you can kind of compare this. This was our beginning balances then before we entered the adjusting entries. And you can kind of check out the beginning balances. And then if your beginning balances are correct, and then all we did in this section or course is do the adjusting entries, then your ending balances would have to be correct. So this is where we stand as of that point. Now I'm gonna look at the transactions that we took place. Notice I'm gonna go to the reports dropdown. We're gonna go to the accounting and taxes. In prior sections or courses, we have taken a look at the transaction list by date. Now just to note, we could still kind of look at that. I could look at my transaction list by date and, and bring this as of all the transaction we, we put in place were 228, 0228. 2, 3, so 0, 2, 28, 2, 3. And so actually we did have a whole lot of transactions that happened on that day, February 28th. Uh, so if you were trying to look at the beginning balances, you would have to account for a whole lot of transactions that happened on that date. But in any case, uh, so we could look at this and if I was to customize it, I wanna look at just the journals, go to the customized reports, and then we're gonna say, let's try to filter it and just look at the transactions type. And then I wanna change this to just the journal entries. And then fonts and numbers, let's bring the font up to 11. Okay, yes, and okay. So there we have the journal entries. You know, that's one way that, that you can look at it. But the adjusting entries, because there could be more than two accounts affected and because they're not using some other form, I think are quite useful oftentimes to actually see in the form of debits and credits. So I'm going to open up then the other report, reports drop down, and then accounting and taxes, the journal report. Now, because it's a journal report, you might think that you just have journal entries in it, but it actually is going to show everything. Let's do it again. 022823, just as of the day of the cutoff. 022823 because all of our adjusting entries were as of that day and let's customize it first just for the size so we can see what it is in total in a bit more detail this time i'll bring it to well can i do 14 to make everything the same let's try it's going to be quite expanded for this particular type of report but we'll give it a shot you know give it a shot that's what i say give it a shot man okay that's not bad so then notice that it's not just the type of transactions that are journal entries. It's using every transaction and showing the journal entry related to it. That is a really good report if you're trying to understand debits and credits and see the impact. So it's the same transactions as the transaction report we just did, we just looked at. But now it gives you it in terms of debits and credits. And if there's more than two accounts impacted, it shows you all the detail as, this, as, as, as we can see with this paycheck one, which is quite complex so that's a, a nice report but we once again want to just look at the journals so i'm going to say the journal entries let's customize it up top let's go to the header no let's go to the filters and i'm going to filter it by type and just look at the journal uh transactions and then okay boom so there are our adjusting entries now we know they are adjusting entries by one, they were entered as of February 28th, 2023. And two, they're journal type of transactions. We didn't enter invoices for the adjusting entries. And three, we put in the memo that they're adjusting entries. Now, be because there were no other actual journal type forms as of 228, which is what got me kind of confused thinking we didn't enter anything as of 228. But what we, we didn't enter any other journal entries as of 228. Therefore, we don't have any other things I can filter down and just see our adjusting entries. If we did have another journal entry as of the end of the year, it just wouldn't have the memo. And I can, I can then account for it possibly. One way you could do that is to, is to export this to Excel and then delete anything that you don't want in Excel. Because this is a report that you might want to be using to communicate to your, to your client or to the accounting department if you're doing the adjusting process this is what we did and this is the report showing exactly you know what we did okay so those are the reports and uh like i say if 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 
you're, you enter these just as they are here as of 228 and your beginning balances were correct, then the ending balances should be correct as of 228. And then we did the adjusting entries, the adjusting entries bringing this up a day. So these are the ones that, I'm sorry, these are the reversing entries to reverse some of the adjusting entries as of the first day of the following period. And so you could check these out and then double check your numbers as of the end of, of uh, March because these are only the trans transactions, by the way, that were the reversal transactions. We did enter a couple other transactions in March in our practice problem. So, but these are the the reversing entries. Okay, let's print these out and, uh, and print them out. So I'm gonna go back up to the balance sheet. We're gonna print them as we have in other sections as a PDF, try to think about how we can sort them and organize them. We'll export them to Excel as well and use Excel as well as a PDF printer to put them all on one uh, page. Now note that we're, we, now that we have two months, I'm gonna add the third month here even though it's not been completed so this isn't like a perfect thing that we would give to a client per se but uh, but i want to print it in a similar way as we would if we were giving it to a client so remember if you're giving something to a client you you got to think how often are you going to do that at the end of the month the end of the quarter the end of the year what reports are you going to include are you going to have a summary balance sheet and then a comparative balance sheet for example multiple comparative balance sheets comparing month by month comparing this month to the prior month there's a whole lot of different detailed reports. You can organize those by memorizing them and then have some system that you can give the reports in a very nice way. I'm gonna, just gonna use this report because it gives us both months and, uh, and the, the third month here to see, to see our totals for our practice problem. So let's customize it. I'm gonna go to the header and footer. Let's get rid of the date, time, report basis as has been our custom. Put our name in the footer. You can put your name, I'll put my name, and then I'll say we want parentheses around the, the, the negatives, and I'll remove, do I want the pennies? Let's keep the pennies for this one so you can check your numbers with them. So I'm gonna say, okay, boom, on that, let's go ahead and say that I wanna print these to save as a PDF, and then I'm gonna go to the drop down. This is gonna be on the desktop. I put a folder in here. QuickBooks, it's gonna go into the QuickBooks GGG reports. Let's make another one new. Let's make these the adjusted reports. Adjusted reports after the adjusting entries is what I'm trying to indicate there. And then I'm just gonna say that this is gonna be balance sheet, boom, and then we'll save it and then do the income statement, otherwise known as the P to the L. Let's customize it. Let's go to the headers and footers. Let's call it an income statement, just because we can. We probably should get rid of the subtitle, date, time, report basis, name in the footer, and then fonts to the numbers, parentheses, and I'll keep, I'll make it red, but I'll keep the pennies, boom and then printing to the P, to the E, to the D, to the F. There's no E, there's no E in it. This is the income statement, okay? And then we'll go to the trial balance and go print, report, uh, save it as a PDF. Actually, I should do my standardized customize, header, footer, date, time, report, basis, footer, footer and then fonts and numbers uh, parentheses reddited okay now do it now you can do it okay now i'll do it here save it and this is going to be the trial balance and then we'll do our journal reports. I'm not gonna do the transaction list by date, but we're gonna use the journal reports instead. Let's first do the ones as of the cutoff date, February 28, customizing font. Let's go to here, get rid of the date, time, name in the footer, fonts, negative numbers with parentheses in red and boom. And then I'll say, print it to save as a PDF. 
So these are the adjusting entries. And then I'll take one day up, one day up, three, one. Those are the reversing entries. And we'll print that out, report and save as, and this will be the reversing entries. So there we have those. I'm gonna say there it is. Hopefully I'll be able to provide you with these items. There's the reports, adjusting reports. I'm gonna put them in another folder. I'm gonna make them large, put them in another folder here. New folder, ADJ reports. And then if I wanted to give this to someone, I can put them all in that folder. I can put them on a cloud drive, like OneDrive or something like that, or I can zip them and give them to someone in an email in a zipped format. So your zipped format might not look like this, but it'll be zipped so I can attach it. Now let's export them to Excel and then make one PDF with all the reports on them like we've done in the past. So I'm gonna go balance sheet, let's export it, create a new worksheet. I'll do this faster because we've seen this before in prior sections. I'm gonna say it's gonna go to a new workbook you're gonna need Excel in order for it to export to Excel. And then I'll make this large. So it opened up Excel, there's our tab. Does it fit on one page wide? That's all I care about right now. No, it doesn't. So I'm gonna, I can get rid of the skinnies like that skinny, holding down control on that skinny. Don't need the skinnies. I'm gonna delete the skinnies. It still doesn't do it. I'm gonna move the A, cut, paste. I'm gonna move these two cut control x paste and then i'm going to get rid of column a altogether. you're gone a but then a new a takes its place that's what happens when you try to get rid of the a so they're like terrorists it's like another one just takes their place you're like what the what is going on here i just got rid of one of these things so there it is i don't know what i'm talking about anyways what is this going to go save let's save this thing save and as and we'll put it on the desktop and then we'll put this in to the data file what is quickbooks data no the ggg reports man get with it this is going to be the adj reports boom and hold on hold on it opened that i, I can't name it the same thing or it tries to open it up or let's put a period after it this is what the file name, don't open up the folder. Excel, what are you doing? Close it, I gotta close it to open the next report. And then profit and loss will do the same thing here. Export, create a new worksheet, but this time it's gonna go to an existing workbook. I don't think it's going to the right one though, so I'm gonna fix it. GGG reports, adjusting entries, that's the one. ADJU, what's the, I guess that makes sense, export. The specific file could not be found. What? Do it. It's right there. It's right. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, I fixed it now. Apparently, uh, the the QuickBooks doesn't like it when you name a file with a dot or period. So I had to put a one there, and then it read it. So good to know. Good to know. So I'm gonna then drag this to the right. This is going to be the ink double clicking on an income statement and go to the second tab. Does it fit on one page? No, no, of course not. So I'm going to then let's get rid of the skinnies holding down control skinnies. I don't need those delete and not there yet. So let's get rid of the column a control X delete column a delete. And then I'm just going to force it to work by making that skinny. All right, closing that back out. Let's then go to the next one. Uh, trial balance. That's the one I need. Let's go ahead and export that. Excel, create a new one. And then existing workbook. Are you going to the right one? No, it's not going. You should know where to go by now. You should know where to go. It's going to go to that one. And then export. And then there it is. Pulling that to the right, double clicking on the name TB trusty trial balance. That's not tuberculosis, it's trial balance. That's what it stands for. 
And then I'm going to get rid of the column. I don't need this total over here. Get rid of column A, delete. None of these fit on a page. This one has this long name because of the sub accounts. So you could go through here and delete the sub accounts because you don't really need those. And you, you know, those are actually kind of confusing way to do it. But I'm just going to skinnerize them like that till they fit on a page. Like so, like so, delete it and then do it again. Now I'm on the journal reports. I need two of these first for 228, 228, 228, because that's the cutoff date. 228 is the cutoff date. Whoo, that's a rhymer. We're going to export this one to the, does it know where it's going yet? Okay, then now it's going to the right place. Export. I'm not even going to check next time. I'm going to live dangerous. Flying by the seat of the pants. Drag this one to the right. This one's totally not going to fit on a page. Check it out. No, we're going to have to reorientate that one for sure. We're going to go to the orientation landscape. And then it's that's not enough. I'm going to get rid of the total. I don't need that total at all. Column A, delete it. But then the terrorists put a new leader in there. So it's still there, but it's okay. That one's not as crazy. So I'm holding down control, selecting all the skinnies, and then we'll right click and delete all that stuff. And then, then maybe I don't need the journal rip stuff really, because I know it's a journal. I'm just going to make that skinny, skinny, skinny. And then I could, I could, uh, maybe I'm going to take this whole thing and say that I'm going to wrap that, wrap it like that. And then I can make that whole thing smaller and then it should wrap the text. But then I don't like it's like it's on the bottom of the cell. So I usually fix that by selecting the whole thing here and say, I want it to be at the top of the cell. That's how I like to see it. That's how I like to see it. Okay. It's still not on one page though. Almost there. Um, come on. Are you kidding me? I don't need this stuff. Oh, this is ridiculous. You're making me look stupid. Okay, I'm just going to wrap this one too. I'm going to wrap this one. We'll wrap that. Now I can be as small as I want. There it is. Okay, so these are the ADJ entry. And then one more round. One more round. I didn't hear no bell. Dang it. I only stop when bells are ringing. I'm not sure if they're real or not. Let's export it to Excel. Export it to Excel. And I'm not even going to check it this time. I'm just going to export it and assume it's going. It doesn't know where it's going. Okay. Whatever. I have to check it. I thought you I thought you'd be able to do it yourself Excel, but no. Maybe it's because it's open right here. I got to close it first. Okay. Okay. I fixed it. I fixed it. Come on. Okay. It crashed, but I'm back now. So I'm going to say reports drop down. Let's go ahead and uh, create a new worksheet. We'll try it again. Try it again. And then it's going to the right place. Boom. So there it is. And then export. There it should go. Last one, I'll throw, they're going to pull this to the right, double click. These are the reversing entries, entries, and let's, this is not going to fit on a page. Of course, let's make it landscape, landscape, and then I'll get rid of the total column. Don't need that. Delete, get rid of the skinnies, A, control holding down, F, H, J, L, N, P, right click and delete that stuff. And then I'm going to take all of this. And I'm going to say wrap the text on that stuff. Wrap it. Wrapping. And then I'm going to skinnerize all of them. Maybe at the same time this time. See if I could do this faster. Did it wrap? Where's the wrapping? Where's the wrapping? Wrap. The wrap. There we go. Then I'm going to select the whole thing. I'm going to put it on. I want it all at the top of the cell. And then I think that's good. I th is it? No, I messed up. Hold on. Hold on. It's got to be a little bit 
a little bit skinnerized just a little bit little bit more just how about this one i can make this one smaller boom all right so now we got it we're going to go to the print file and we're going to put this all on one page with a cute pdf printer which is free if you don't have one i think you can get it for free i'm not advertising for them we're not affiliated at all hitting the drop down i want to look at the entire workbook so we've got the balance sheet we got the income statement we got the tb we got the journal report for the adjusting entries and then the reversing entries looks good mui bn how you bn i'm mui bn hippies are just bn man but i'm mui bn that's way better so i'm going to the home to here edit where's this quickbooks we're gonna put this on the ggg file and this is gonna be that okay let's save it so now we can provide it to somebody and hopefully i'll be providing uh you guys with this so you can check your numbers with it as well but we've got the reports here in the adjusting area we can give them the reports one at a time i'm going to make it large we can give them an excel worksheet we can attach them to to uh, a OneDrive or something or we can have this one file now with all of the reports in them which is super fancy and like in a good way not too many not too frilly you know you, you get too fancy with too much stuff going on at one time this is but this is good no, notice the landscape stuff shows up vertically here so you can still read it properly and that is that